Hello, I'm Varian Brandon. I am a stranded color work designer. Um, I live in the beautiful mountains of North Carolina. You can find me on Ravelry as Varian Brandon, V-A-R-I-A-N, Brandon, B-R-A-N-D-O-N. And there are several of my patterns there. Some uh, are more complicated than others. It's all the same basic technique because all I really do is stranded color work. Um, I do some fair isle patterns, but I'm now mostly kind of going off into different directions, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, if you um, w have worked on one of my patterns or would like to work on one of my patterns, you can find them, um, as I say, you can find them in Ravelry. Um, my website is, oh, well, if you have worked on it, get in touch because I would love to hear what you're working on, how you worked on it. Um, Anything, I'd love to see pictures. I love to see pictures. I would say if you have any issues, get in touch. I'm here to help. Um, you can also find me at Branded Knitting Designs, um, um, dot com. That's my website, and that's where you can see um, tutorials of stranded color work. And I keep trying to put up more and more. You can see um, uh, yeah, there's a all of the um, podcasts of various types I put up there is a quick and easy link to there too. So you can find them there, and that's Branded Knitting Designs. And um, I think that's about all the, I'm on Instagram is Varian Brandon. Um, I'm on Twitter, but I don't, I mean, Twitter is only on Twitter because I go from Instagram to Twitter. On Facebook, if you're a Facebook person, I am um, Brandon Knitting Designs on Facebook. So, um, okay, today we are talking about gauge slash gauge or and or tension with stranded color work. And I think we've talked about before the fact that the, this, Stitches of, um, or have we? I almost, you can talk about it again, whether I have or not, because it's all, it's all apropos and we need, it's, it's all worth hearing several times. If, um, that the stitches created by stranded color work are almost square. And that is if you, you use a smaller needle and sort of at the bottom range of the needle suggested for your yarn, because most stranded color work people like, um, a gauge that's sort of dense, um, tension that's sort of dense, because you don't want the stitches to spread out and you to see, I've got something in my lap, I don't see, I'll see what it down here, so it doesn't spread all over the place, um, so that you, if you've got a strand in the back like this, you don't want the stitches to spread all out so you can see that, that color kind of peeking through. So you try to get a, 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 a tension that's a little bit tighter. Now there are some yarns that will bloom um, and that and puff up when you do a wet blocking so that you don't have to have, don't have to worry about that um, As a whole I like a denser fabric, but that's just me. That's just the way I knit um, Because you have that sort of square uh, Shape and that comes up as I, I think I've talked about before um, Is that when you've got these stitches sitting there those are upside down but these stitches sitting there um, and Normal fabric, you can spread out the, the stitches and they can get all spread out. But with this, with the strand of work, you've got the strand behind, and so that and that's straight. That's not going in a loop like this. It what you're you're holding it. It holds together, so it keeps them from being too tall or too too fat, if you will. Um, as I said, there are some yarns that will bloom that that doesn't matter. I mean that it kind of helps to kind of hide, they, if they puff up, it'll kind of help to hide that stitch behind. So well, I'm changing the white balance all over the place, aren't I? Sorry, you see, you see this? You see how it changes the white balance? <laughs> Sorry, that's just me. Um, anyway, uh, then you, um, but the good news with the denser fabric um, is that it's, I mean, that's what it was created for, is for warmth. You use finer yarn, done denser, gives you a warmer fabric. You also, um, don't see the pictures there's reason for behind that let me get my notes so I know that I'm talking about the right stuff um, it's oh I know it's also easier um, when you're trying to pick up stitches for like the front rib being here or for a sleeves for a steak if you've got almost a one-to-one -one pickup um, that way it's just a to me it's easier than you're doing three to five or four to three a three to four picking up. Does that make sense to people? When you are going up fabric that's going this way, knitted this way, you're picking up um, stitches in it out, out this way as is, is it for the rib here or for sleeves, drop down, top down sleeves. Um, you're, you're going in the side of the fabric and they're, you know, 
rows, rounds here, um, it's instead of picking up one, two, three, skip one, like sometimes they tell you to do, or one, two, one, two, skip one, one, skip another, you know, to pick it, to make it so that it doesn't, um, that it fits evenly on that space. I'm hoping people understand what I'm saying. Um, with stranded work, it's almost a one-to-one. -one. So you don't, so you can almost pick up and, and even, it, and sometimes people do pick up one-to-one. -one. Um, and then it's, you can steam it out. At least that's what I found. Everybody's different. Everybody knits differently. So if you knit differently, let me know. Um, just, just because I'm fascinated by it. Just, just you know, kind of see how things go. Um, so that's an easier thing to do. Um, now, gauge or tension. I will spare you, you must knit a gauge swatch. I will spare you that lecture. I know you've had that lecture a million times. Everybody you talk to, except, oh, the dreaded swatch, swatch, knitted swatch, gauge swatch. That's what I'm trying to say. I will tell you, it's a real thing, and I will spare you the, the lecture lecture, but I will substitute the lecture lecture for a tale of, a cautionary tale. It's called a cautionary tale, okay? When I first started knitting um, stranded work, I learned how to knit um, by a designer who was on her sort of rise to the great ascension uh, there is for, for color worker for knitters. <laughs> and this is Alice Starmore. So I was, I'd never knit a color work before. It was the coolest thing ever. And I was so excited. The trick was, I love the technique of, of a chart with color and you can change colors and you can do all this kind of stuff. Um, what, there were several points of it that I missed that would have been helpful. So in the meantime, I was going around and I was buying all the Alice Darmore patterns I could come up with. And I bought this book. This is the Celtic collection book. Um, and I remember getting it. It's such a gorgeous, gorgeous book. And another time we'll go through and look at all the different beautiful pictures, beautiful patterns in here. It was done in the late 80s, early 90s, maybe. Um, but, um, and this was the pattern that I had, to, had, had to make. So this is called Aaron. And it is, is that right? Yeah, Erin. I don't even know. It's, it's, it's the thing. And if you see that, if you see that there, um, you will see that, or you may not have seen. If you know her design, she'll know that this actually is similar. And I see similar. You'll see why in a minute. Um, to what, um, i got to get my notes in front of me now, to um, that sweater. So, I was so excited. I had to start. I was going to get the yarn. I was going to get the needle she called for. I was going to get the yarn she called for. And I was going to start because this, this was my, this was going to be my sweater. I was so excited. So I had no idea. I'm sure they gave us a lecture because I took this tour, Rowan tour, um, where Alice Starmore and Kay Fawcett were the two instructors. And um, Alice just got me. She was, an, she was a math teacher. I minored in math. So it was like cool, you know. So I went into, um, there was an outlet, a yarn outlet in um, about two hours from where I was living in South Carolina. And I went in that yarn, it's Yarns Brunswick. And I walked in, well, I love Yarns Brunswick. They're lovely. Um, it's fine. Um, however, they are not, Shet it's not Shetland yarn. I, at the time, had no idea about gauge or even types of yarn. I had always knitted a sweater where whatever, you got the yarn, you got the needles, you start knitting. You know, whatever. And um, that little thing that said gauge, what your gauge should be, wasn't for me. No, I just started knitting. So I would start to knit and, and the thing would say, if you're knitting just a plain stockinette garment, you know, it says, you know, knit until your garment mention, you know, measures 12 inches or whatever it is, 15 inches. Um, and then you do something else, right? So I didn't didn't count the rows because it was all in pieces at that point when I was doing it. I counted. Um, I mean, it was just 15 inches. Okay, I've done it. Okay, what what next? So I started. Um, I, I wanted to start this. So I walked down the aisles at Yarns Brunswick, and this is not a big. This is a big warehouse. I mean. 
they made the yarn there. And this was the, what is it called? The mill shop. Yeah. And I walked down these aisles and they were aisles with yarn on both sides of you. They went almost up to the ceiling with all of this yarn, these, all these gorgeous colors. I had no idea what color anything was because the colors in here, the things in here were called out by, um, okay, now I've closed the book, so let me see if I can't find it again. Um, were, were called, the colors were called for by the names used by uh, Rowan. This is Rowan yarn. Um, I had no idea where to find Rowan. I had, I had not the foggiest idea. Um, Juniper Donegal, Donegal um, Matter Red, um, Sienna Botany. Uh, I didn't know how to find those that yarn. So I just kind of looked at the symbol, looked at the chart. I looked at the symbol of, um, and the charts are, I won't show you the charts. I probably should show you the charts. Um, the charts are crazy. Um, the ice um, went down the aisle and just looked at the color that was called for, if I could figure out kind of what color that was. I kind of looked at the gradations and kind of thing. And I just pulled whatever yarn was there. Again, not paying attention to the weight of the yarn, not paying attention to the kind of the yarn. All I was doing was pulling colors, pulling colors, just pulling colors off the shelf. That was all I was doing. And when I couldn't, for, fortunately, most of the things down that aisle were wool, fortunately. Um, there were two, I guess there were two or three colors. Yeah, two or three colors that I couldn't find in the wool. So not to be deterred, I just pulled some sort of um, glossy cotton. Yeah, I know. I know. So you can kind of see that this bright yellow and this sort of orangey colors, they sh they stand out a little bit more than the other kind of colors. It's because they're cotton. Shiny, glossy cotton. <laughs> it's just really funny. So, um, but, yeah, um, but I, I got it. I got it done. I just started. I just started knitting. I'm going to pull this off because I'm going to show you the pattern, the, the motifs in it. Um, hopefully it won't fall on the floor and I won't have to go down crazy. All right. Now, um, I don't know whether you can see this or not. Uh, this is what, this is what sold me was this, oh wait, here, it's here, was this dog. Can you see the dog in there? There's his eye. There's his nose. There's his hind quarters. There's his tail and the red Ah, 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 let's see if I do this. All of this red down here um, is um, red, and that's actually a, a sort of a rust color, is the feet. Okay? I thought that was cool. I was, couldn't wait to do that and make that show up. And then the other main motif is this sort of um, braid, sort of the, in the blues and, and purples braid. Okay? So the original pattern called for um, in the gauge that Alice called for calls for three of the dog panels okay and three of the braided panels with the little checkerboard dotted this little checkerboard dotted thing yeah you can see it it kind of goes right here um, this little section in between each one okay so that's the deal um, and I, and the length was supposed to be 23 inches. So when you reach the end of the third braid, this, the, you reach the end of this, you should be right at the shoulder, and you should measure 23 inches. Okay? At 23 inches, because I'm just going along, you know, at 23 inches, this is where I was. Now, these are the feet of, of the dog of the third dog so and and I'm at 23 inches and I'm thinking I'm just gonna stop I'm not even gonna complete the thing so I'm gonna stop so I cut the dog off cut his feet off totally like this did the kitchener stitch yeah did the kitchener stitch to for the shoulder so you have dog facing feet facing this way in the front and dog's feet facing that way in the back and no third braid there's only two braided sections. So, so whoa, down here's one braided section. Here's the second braided section. 
So there are only two dog panels, there should be three. Okay, you can understand, no gay swatch at all, nothing. The circumference was supposed to be 40 inches, 23 inches in length, as I said, and um, the, the sleeves were supposed to be 18.5 inches, right? Uh, the gauge, her gauge is 16 stitches and 19 rounds in two inches, which um, to me is a little further. I get, I get a squarer stitch than she apparently does. So I find that, I just noticed that today. I found that very interesting. Uh, what I got, instead of three dogs, I got um, 2.75, 2, 2.75, two and three quarters dogs and two braids instead of three. My circumference was 48.5 as opposed to 40. So I had eight inches more. Same stitch count and everything. Wrong gauge. And of course, 23 inches length because I just stopped. And the sleeves were 19 inches because I had to finish out my, my I guess there were decreases down to the cuff. So my gauge was 13.5 stitches per inch and 14 per two inches and 14 rounds per two inches. So, do your gauge swatch, <laughs> just because you'll end up with a mammoth sweater. Okay, there are several ways to do a gauge swatch in stranded color work, um, one of which is to uh, do a swatch cap, and basically it's just to make a cat in the round. Cast on uh, a number of stitches and work the pattern. In this case, I, I probably would have worked probably two dogs, <laughs> two dogs worth, two dogs, <laughs> two dogs worth, and um, and perhaps maybe even did one set of braids, just, and then you end up with, a, you, you add enough to it so that it makes, um, you can get a complete, a complete repeat of your larger motifs, I mean, so that it's complete all the way around, um, but also enough to actually make a cap, and when you get it done and cast it, cut, close the top and get it cast off, you, you've got something you could measure. Um, but as you and I both know, caps cause um, about 200, 200 yards to make a cap, hat of some sort, uh, which is a lot of yarn extra to buy. Um, other people um, suggest that you start with a sleeve and, you know, and do a sleeve, which I think is a, probably a pretty brilliant idea. Um, you start with a sleeve and then if you've got your gauge and then you measure your gauge as soon as you get it wide enough you know, if you're increasing from the bottom or decreasing from the top, you are, um, this pattern called, called for you to do the sleeves afterwards. You cut it, you make a sleeve for the arm, a steak for the armhole and then cut it open and you work top down. So you couldn't have done it on this, but for other, other sleeves, um, if you're doing an all over pattern where you come to the top and you are doing a raglan or some sort of fitted, a fitted sleeve, which we can, we'll talk about later. Um, it's, uh, you could do it, do it that way. Most of the time with stranded work, a sleeve may or may not work depending on what kind of construction you're using. Um, I'm gonna switch around the camera and show you a couple of other ways to do um, sw uh, stranded swatches. Lots of answers there. And then we'll come back. So be with me, bye. Or not bye, you know. Hello, here we are a little bit closer. Um, if this microphone sounds different, because it should, because it's a different microphone. It's funny how those things work. Uh, anyway, what you're looking at is a flat swatch. Now this takes up considerably less yarn than the swatch cap or the sleeve because you're not having to go completely around. And we'll, I'll show you how to do this in just a moment. But what the, the great thing about color swatches like this is that you can actually not only test your, your tension or gauge, but you can also test color combinations. Here's an early one I did for um, a pattern called uh, East Lake. And this one has... Um, the I try to do this sort of light purple you can see here and I don't put my glasses on it make things will be a lot easier um, the light purple which you can see here and I decided that didn't work so I switched to this dark burgundy kind of color here and here and and I'm sorry I'm looking through the camera <laughs> rather than looking at the at the item so it looks my, my I feel like I'm going okay here it is right there sorry anyway <laughs> this is this is called a flat swatch and you make this by um, starting here 
and knitting across to the end and, and usually try to do it so that you have enough repeats of your pattern so that you have um, at least four inches, three or four inches to, to measure from. So you start down at this end, you work this way, you break the yarn, pull the, pat, the whole thing down to the other end and attach new yarns again and work this way. So you're constantly knitting because if you do these flat, you're not going to get the, the right gauge for knitting in the round. So this is a way to get gauge um, this is a way to get gauge w knitting kind of flat, but for in the round, because you're only knitting, you're not purling. Is it absolute accurate? Sometimes no, sometimes yes, depends on the knitter. Um, and I'm going to show you how you do this um, in just with this other uh, sample over here, but this is a flat swatch. Now, you still are using yarn, you're not using as much, because what I've done here is that this particular swatch can be steam blocked, it can be um, wet blocked and laid out flat. And then I, what I do is I just trim up the edges just because it bugs me to have it all crazy, but you don't have to do that. Um, and that's a good, and I have a whole set of these. Um, they, they're usually all labeled, as you can see here. This one is, um, says vest test number with a number five. Oh no. What does that say? Vest test number five, um, a US three and how many gauges, how many stitches and stuff I got per gauge and the thing is called East Lake. That's what that's all, that's what that tag is for. All right, let's look at something else. This is something I'm kind of working along. This is um, the same kind of thing. This is called a speed swatch. This one you can, when you get done with everything, you can, um, you can steam block it. But the idea is that you never cut the yarn so that ideally when you get through, you can rip it out and never have wasted, you know, never have, wa not wasted yarn, but never, you know, still have the same amount of yarn you started with. So what I'm going to do is just finish out um, this, this row slash round here. Um, you can see how many times I'm having to wrap the yarn around. I'm trying a new thing. Um, usually I do continental stitch and this, this, uh, Finger, what is that called? A finger. This finger is way up in the air and I'm trying to wrap it a couple of more times around my fingers so I can keep it down a little bit closer because I'm starting to get some pain kind of in here and I'm hoping that if I can keep the, this finger closer to the work that'll stop that because I'm not going to stop knitting. So anyway, let's get um, one, two, three oranges and then what I normally do with these things is that I will knit into the back um, if I can't see it, into the back of that last stitch, which is, which will twist the yarn. Um, and then, and uh, as far as, as the flats, is, it kind of works the same way as that flat swatch you just saw. If you'll notice the flat swatch does not have knots, neither does this on the end. Um, this particular yarn, if I was making a flat swatch out of it, I probably would tie a knot because it's not very sticky. That other flat swatch was, uh, the flat swatch was a, um, was Shetland yarn, so it's not going to run any place, so I can just cut it off. But if I was doing a flat swatch, I would cut it here, but I'm doing a speed swatch, so I'm not cutting it. You can see it makes a mess, but who cares, because what you want is this part. And then I will take this and take it all the way to the other end over here, like this, get it ready to knit again. Where is it? There it is. Um, get it ready to knit again, and then I will just, just grab the two colors of yarn you know, and pull out enough so that it makes this big enough loop. And what you want to do, and then, and then to start knitting here, but what you want to do is make this loop, make this big enough so that you can make this loose enough so you can lie this flat and take your, your gauge on it. As I said, if you're doing the flat swatch, you would break it here and slide it to the other end of the needle and start it again here. I've also seen people who will take, um, who will do something with magic loop or DPNs or two circs? You're making noise, Neil. Shush, shush, shush. And make a, a thing like this, and then cut it up and then lay it flat like that. Um, I prefer to have the fringes on the edges. Okay, so there you have it. You have the three different ways. Um, God, it must have gotten dark outside because it looks dark. I've got shadows over here, which is weird. Um, there are the three different ways to do a swatch, I mean, well, okay, five different ways. You could do a swatch cap, you could do a, a sleeve if your pattern construction calls for you to work the sleeve up, I mean, the wrist up. 
Um, you can do a flat swatch like this. Like I said, these are really great for doing color placement. You can see, as I said, there's the lavendery, and I just decided it was just disappearing and went to the burgundy. Same things here, I just changed the burgundy. So it was, it's a good way to kind of see, test your colors if you're kind of changing colors around. You can do that, or you can do, that's a flat swatch, uh, and that's where it's where the yarn is broken at the end. Here is the speed swatch that I was working on. Um, so there's the, the, obviously some sort of color. Okay, there is the, the, the thing itself. Here is all the tangled mess. But um, you are, when you get done, you can pull this out. And um, what I'll do a lot of times, if a yarn company has sent me yarn, and it's a limited amount of yarn, I mean, uh, and I, or I, I've asked for a certain amount, and rather than, you know, I'm on a deadline, I can't ask for more, or it just sounds like, send me more yarn because I want more yarn. I don't want to be that person. So what I try to do is just use the yarn that they sent me, unless it's a whole other story. Anyway, um, I can I will do a pattern with the yarn like this, a full, you know, four by four, five by six by whatever. Um, it's better to do a little bit more than four because these end stitches will get a little loosey goosey. So you want to have something where you have a clear four inches to measure. Um, but I will do those, take a picture of it, rip everything out, do another pattern, take a picture of that, rip everything out. As many designs as I have to test for myself or to send to the yarn company to say, choose one. If I can't choose or they want to, they want to have an input, just choose one. And that way I can just, I'll have the picture, I can just rip it out again um, and have the yarn all ready to go. So that's really good. Now, what happens if you don't get gauge? I mean, that's a good question. And with, you, it's, you do the same sorts of things that you would do with regular one color knitting. And it's that you, you change your needle, either a smaller or a larger needle. I mean, we've all done that, so you know how to do that. The other way to kind of check with, with color knitting, because you want that strand in the back to be long enough to give your front stitches the ability to, you know, to at least stretch a little bit. So what I end up doing, uh, I'll knit a little of this and just show you this way, is that I will, um, you could, well, you can either go to a, um, try a wooden needle, because wooden needles have a little more grip to them, and therefore will hopefully give you a, a, a better um, tension, because they, they're gripping, it's not just sliding all over the place. A lot of what I will do is while I am knitting, I will like give my yarn the what I've been working on just a little bit of a um, a little bit of a tug, um, just to kind of stretch it out a little bit. And I'll do that every just every so often um, until you're until you you kind of intuit into it. I guess that's what I'm looking for. Um, kind of what your tension should be. So. Those are the methods. You change your needles, obviously, one or the other. You try wooden needles. You try, and then, or you make sure that you pull out your yarn. Other people will do things like, like I've seen people do things like when they, um, is that they will stick their finger. See, here's my, my orange yarn that I'm going to, um, is, is in, the, in behind. They will stick their finger behind the orange yarn which is the stranded yarn and get to make, give it make it a little looser um they'll do that i don't do that so i don't do it well hmm. uh, so those are all different ways to try to get your tension bottom line is the more you do it the better your tension is going to be I, I mean as anything is with anything so just keep at it um there are a lot of things that will come out in, in, in um wet blocking but if it's way too tight it's going to still going to ripple so you gotta have to practice that tension and that, uh, like pulling it out. I mean, just sort of stretch, spreading the stitches out kind of helps as well. Um, there's something else I was gonna say about it. I left my piece of paper. I think that's about it, seriously. Well, um, whatever I've forgotten, I'll say. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. Um, I talked a little bit about tying knots around on the edges. These don't have any knots on them. Um, each time I pick up a swatch, I just give it just a little bit of a tug, just just to kind of stabilize the edges. Um, you saw me do a, a twisted last stitch, sometimes a twisted first stitch, which gives that first stitch just a little bit of tightness so it doesn't get all loosey-goosey at the edges. But either way, you wanna make sure that you have enough space 
to measure a full swatch or without counting the very first or last stitch. Okay, so that's about it. Next time is, I have no idea, oh, needles. Next time we're going to talk about needles um, and something else. I forget what. Sorry. <laughs> it's not in front of me right this second. I took it in the other room when I was doing the other cup other on the other um, the other setup. So uh, well that is stranded color work. Um, I think needles are next. And uh, in the meantime, uh, my patterns are at Barry and Brandon on Ravelry. They're on um, uh, brandedknittingdesigns.com. Uh, Instagram is very Brandon. Uh, would love to hear comments. Any, if you've got any questions about anything I talk about, please um, write a note, um, a comment, send me an email, whatever is good. I love hearing from you. I mean, we all do. I mean, I'm sitting here talking to myself, looking at myself at the camera, <laughs> which is sort of dismal and kind of kind of sad, you know. <laughs> But anyway, it's all right, but with an itchy nose. Um, but so I'd love to hear a comment. That would be great. Um, this whole series on stranded color work is part of a blog series that I did several years ago. And these are the video parts of it that we can, I can kind of talk and, talk and chat more about it. Um, the written blog is posted uh, on my website under, I think, information is what it's listed under. And so that's in the form of a blog post that you can actually read and have something in front of you. Most of the same things that I talk about here, I've talked about there. Um, there's some things that, um, I mean, it, I'm two years down my path of this design work. That, so there are a couple things that I know now that I didn't know when I wrote that. Um, or examples, not really knowledge, but just examples of more things. I'll give you knowledge too. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, bless you guys for joining me. Thank you so much. Uh, if you've got any questions, as I said, please get in touch. If you want to have a written version, it is. That's. I'll, I'll go put that up as soon as I post this. I will go put that up on there. Um, just as a, a, a cautionary uh, warning. How's that? I'm getting ready to do another tan tangent um, episode to tell you kind of what's going on, what's on my needles, how the project worked out for TNA, all that kind of stuff. And then new coming up um, that I'm going to shoot in the next couple of days and hopefully get up pretty, I don't know whether I'll post it, whether it gets posted with me or whether it gets posted, um, I think it has to be posted on my website. Um, the uh, Aryan big coat that um, I did for TNA two years ago um, I'm now doing videos for that kind of, if you buy the kit, you'll buy the kit from, from, um, Elemental Effects Yarn, um, you will, you can see the videos that will talk you through all the different parts of making that coat. And that coat comes in three lengths. There's a floor length, there's a mid-calf length, and then there is a slightly round, I think it's above the knee length, um, for that coat. That's a sort of a kimono type coat. So, Keep, keep your eye out for that one. I'll keep telling you about how that's going. So in the meantime, thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you. God, that sounded cheesy, didn't it? Sorry. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Take care of yourselves. I will hopefully see you. Um, your comments would be nice soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>